Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Got more of your questions as we get closer to WrestleMania 32. Let's get started today with the first one, which comes from Grant Peoples. What do you think about the Authority turning face and Reigns going heel? To me, that would be better than what we got now. I totally agree with you about this. I feel that WWE should do a heel turn for Roman Reigns and better yet, do a double turn at WrestleMania. I've gotten a lot of questions about a possible double turn at Mania and the idea of the authority being baby faces now. I'm not sure how that would work with Stephanie, but I feel that with the authority as baby faces, you could have Roman Reigns as the dominant heel trying to take over the company and then Triple H has to bring back Seth Rollins as the top babyface to save the company. That's a storyline WWE could do after WrestleMania. And in general, I think that WWE needs to give up on this Roman Reigns top babyface push. It's just not working. A lot of fans continue to be against it. And I think it's stubbornness on Vince McMahon's part. He is set on Roman Reigns being the next John Cena. And I think he needs to just give up on that. You know, I think Vince has this fear of failing. And in his mind, if he keeps pushing this, eventually the people will just accept it and he'll win. But I feel overall it would be best for business to have Reigns turn heel. So many guys in the business, not just fans, but people that have worked in the industry, feel that Roman Reigns should turn heel. Steve Austin, Kurt Angle... Jim Ross, all these people have commented on Roman Reigns turning heel, and to me that would be the big angle to make WrestleMania an all-time memorable show and get people invested in watching WWE past WrestleMania once all the Mania hype is died down. And of course, if Roman Reigns does turn heel, either on the road to WrestleMania or at WrestleMania, I will shave off this beard. This is a protest beard. I want WWE to shake things up. That is one of the stipulations. If Roman Reigns turns heel, the beard will be gone. Moving on here, got this question from Colin Nicholson. Why is Triple H defending the title at an event in March? Is this to create WrestleMania hype, get rid of ring rust, or to alter his WrestleMania match? It could be a combination of everything you mentioned. It also could be that Triple H is making this decision based on ego and the fact that he wants to have one successful title defense before dropping the title to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. That's a possibility as well, but definitely I could see him wanting to get back in the ring before WrestleMania and also hyping up WrestleMania by him defending the title. Now, at this point, I'm not even sure if it's 100% confirmed. I know there was a poster that got leaked, and that has led to a lot of speculation. But makes sense for Triple H to have at least one title defense before WrestleMania. I mean, after all, the whole idea that he won the title and is having zero title defenses until WrestleMania, it's quite ridiculous. And why not have something, have a reason for people to tune into this March to WrestleMania special in Toronto. Why not? Or Madison Square Garden or whatever. Why not have him go out there and defend the title a few times? And one person said he could risk getting hurt. Um, if that's the case, he shouldn't be WWE Champion in the first place. But also, Triple H isn't that fragile. I think that him going out there and having one or two matches is not going to be too much of a risk. So, if it was me, I'd have him go out there and defend the title. Alright, this one comes from Callum. Hey Aaron, do you think that WWE will give up on Roman Reigns and settle for him being an upper mid-card talent? That I do not see happening. What I think will happen is one of two things. Either Vince McMahon will be stubborn, as I mentioned earlier, and will continue to push Roman Reigns as the top guy no matter what, or they turn him heel and become he becomes the top heel of the company. Either way, I, I think Roman Reigns will continue to be one of the top guys in WWE for years to come. So it's just a matter of WWE doing something interesting with him creatively so the fans that are vocal right now and critical of Roman Reigns will have something to enjoy. Uh, so it's just a matter of that. 
And I would be fine with Roman Reigns staying as a babyface if the writers had a clue and knew what they were doing, which it's pretty clear that they don't. Their, their greatest success with Roman Reigns was booking him like Steve Austin, but they really can come up with nothing new for the guy and something different that will get fans invested in the character in a positive way. That has not happened for the most part, except for the the casual fans that, that already like Roman Reigns and the guys that think WWE is still real. So I would, if I had confidence in the WWE writing team, I would be fine with Roman Reigns staying babyface. But it's clear that it's not working, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many others. So I think it's time to just give up on it and do the heel turn and take the storyline in a new direction. All right, moving on here. This one comes from Mick. Would love to see the notorious MMA in WWE when he retires in UFC. Is this possible? Brock versus McGregor dream match. If you had not mentioned the name McGregor, I would have had no idea who the notorious MMA is. That's how little I pay attention to MMA and UFC. I do not follow it at all, so I really cannot say, although from what I've heard about um, Conor McGregor, he's a very entertaining personality, and from what I've heard from people, he would do very well in WWE, so it would not shock me. I mean, there are several guys in UFC that could successfully transition to WWE. We've seen other fighters in the past do it, so it is a possibility. I think it's definitely an option, and once his MMA career is done, I could see WWE absolutely having interest in him, no doubt about it. Alright, this one comes from Johnny Goldsmith. Is Big Show the greatest giant of all time, or does that accolade belong to Andre? I think Andre will go down as the greatest giant of all time because he had this mystique to him. He was one of a kind, and he was a major attraction during his heyday and through the 80s and that historic match with Hulk Hogan, that is a match that people will never forget. The body slam heard around the world. Andre is this larger than life figure and he was popular beyond the world of wrestling. People outside of wrestling know who Andre the Giant is. And you really can't say the same for Big Show. Big Show hasn't reached that level of overall popularity. So I think Andre will go down as the greatest giant of all time, but Big Show very well could be number two when it's all said and done. And in terms of longevity and what he's done during his career, um, Big Show is definitely one of the all-time greatest giants. Um, if not first, then definitely um, consideration at being number two. All right, this one comes from Rigger. Well, Aaron, how better could the invasion have been if the NWO, Steiner, Goldberg, and so forth went to WWE straight away? It would have made a difference, but at the end of the day, if the invaders were not given the opportunity to shine and have some dominance over the WWF roster, then it would have flopped just as much. It maybe would have had a more short-term success, but long-term, it would have fizzled out. Maybe a little bit slower, who knows? But the, the bottom line is the invasion could have worked if guys like Booker T and DDP were put over and they actually got to beat some of the WWE guys instead of being portrayed as second rate. Um, but yeah, that, that was definitely an issue not having Goldberg involved. I mean, if Goldberg came in, he should have, he should have dominated everybody on the WWF roster and been a serious threat. That would have made the invasion a huge success. But if Goldberg had come in and was losing right away, it, it would have flopped. I mean, that, that's just my take on it. Um, it was just a matter of portraying the WCW guys as a threat to WWE. And WWE did not go in that direction. And that's why six months after it began, it was all over. All right, this one comes from Ron. Do you think the New Day could make it in the Attitude Era, or would they get lost because of the great roster at the time? Please answer in video. I think that the New Day would have done well in almost any era in WWE because they're very entertaining and they're great athletes. And that combination makes a successful sports entertainer. 
I'm confident that they would have done very well in the Attitude Era. But then again, it's one of those what-if questions. You never know for sure. But with Kofi's ability and Big E's size, you know, Vince has always had a thing for the large guys. So it doesn't matter if it was the 1980s or the 90s or the 2000s. Big E would have had a spot in the company, I think. So I, I, I'm fairly certain they would have done well. All right, this one comes from Nick Easy. Could we see a two multi-man match or two multi-man matches for the U.S. and I.C. titles at WrestleMania? Would not surprise me. I would not be a huge fan of that. I, I, I think that at least one of those matches, either the U.S. title or the I.C. title, will be a multi-man match just to get a lot of people on the card. But for both title matches to be multi-man matches, I mean, that would really be pushing it in my opinion. And it would just water down the titles even more. Quite frankly, I think that both U.S. and I.C. title matches at WrestleMania should be singles matches. Or if you're going to do multi-man matches, do a triple threat or a fatal four-way. But if they do matches where the guys are just thrown together, seven people or eight people in a ladder match, uh, to me it's just lazy booking. And it just devalues the titles, in my opinion, after so much work was done to elevate those titles over the past year. All right, this one comes from Mr. DCD. Hey, Aaron, what are your thoughts on Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32? I feel like they have good chemistry. Please answer in video. Well, you're not the only one that feels that way. I mean, definitely people in WWE felt that that match had more momentum, that feud had more momentum than Brock Lesnar versus Bray Wyatt. And I would have to agree. When Ambrose and Lesnar were going back and forth during those segments leading up to Fastlane, I felt like that match had potential for WrestleMania, even though Dean Ambrose has not been built up to the level you would hope for as a guy who is challenging Brock Lesnar. Uh, they're, they're doing this angle where he's this underdog, but he refuses to quit, and he never says die. And it's kind of like Jeff Hardy versus The Undertaker from 2002. Um, so I could see WWE making this work with Dean Ambrose and they make it blatantly clear in the storyline that he's the underdog, but he's going to shock everybody, he's going to shock the world, and maybe just maybe he will at WrestleMania. So it's an interesting storyline, and if done correctly, I would be okay with Dean Ambrose beating Brock Lesnar. I think that Dean Ambrose really needs a huge win. Not sure if it's going to happen or not. Would not surprise me if he loses, but if they told this story well they could get away with Brock Lesnar doing a job to Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania. It's just a matter of, of uh, executing it properly so Dean Ambrose gets the rub off of Lesnar and Lesnar doesn't come off looking too weak. So if they can pull that off, then it will be a very successful match at WrestleMania. All right, I got one more here from Grant Peoples. When the Hart Foundation gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, do you think it'll be for the tag team or the stable? I think initially it'll be for the tag team because with the, the stable you have Owen Hart involved and you know that could be treading in dangerous water with Martha Hart. So I think WWE will stay clear of that for now. I think the tag team will go in first. If they're going to induct the Hart Foundation, I think it'll be as the tag team first. And then maybe down the line, if things get better with Martha Hart, um, they'll have the entire group go into the Hall of Fame with the British Bulldog and Brian Pillman. You know, I would like to see that happen. I would like to see both incarnations of the Hart Foundation as a tag team and as a group go into the Hall of Fame. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No dq and a Video. Thanks as always for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Please share this video, any social media site that you go on, whether it's Facebook, or Twitter, or Tumblr, whatever. Uh, please keep spreading the word about No DQ and a video. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for all the very latest breaking news and rumors regarding WrestleMania 32. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time for more.